Art can be expensive. Art can be cheap. Real cheap. Art can be ridiculous. Art can be unpredictable. Art can sometimes disguise the truth. Art can be subjective, and art can be rejective. Art can be just about any dang thing it wants to be. Thanks for tuning in. I'm the Amazing Fleck, and I'm here today to tell you that art is everything. The reason I say art is everything is because it kind of is depending on how you want to define the term art. There's so many different ways you can define the term, but the one I like the most is art is creative expression. So I'm not here to debate whether or not the universe and everything we know it has been created by some creator or if it happened by happenstance chance. Art can go everywhere from architecture to music to visual performance arts, dancing, singing, sculpting. Anything that takes careful planning and tact to create something with a vision and intention to communicate something is an art form. Any way you express yourself, any way you create something is a mode of art. Now as an artist, I can really appreciate art in all of its forms. I really can. Even art that I don't necessarily agree with or respect the message of, I can still respect the intention or the thought behind the piece or the technical skill put into it. There's always something you can appreciate about a piece of art, even if it doesn't really strike a chord with you personally, in my opinion. Now we're living in very strange times where the concept of intellectual property has changed completely. Since the birth of the internet, a lot of art has been stolen, replicated, shared, without the permission of the creators. And intellectual property is a very strange thing. How do you define who owns what when it comes to ideas? What if you came up with an idea and you created it, but someone already did it 600 miles away, two years before you did, now you are suddenly stealing their artwork when you came up with it all on your own? There's a lot of gray area there in my opinion, I feel. But someone who has grown up and watched the internet popularize in his teenage years, I saw the birth of Napster, I saw the evolution of Kazaa and Morpheus, I've seen various IRC platforms come and go over the years as well, and it's all thanks to computer science and the, the internet and the technology behind it. A fun fact about technology, technology, the word itself, comes from the word technos, the Greek word, meaning art. Very curious, isn't it? Art is creative expression, it makes sense to me. We saw many popular artists such as Metallica and Prince get very upset over their created works being stolen and shared without their permission. You can't blame an artist for wanting to get paid. Many of us are absolutely starving and hungry. I should know. It's an unfortunate truth that historically many artists, their work isn't really valuable until after they pass away. It wasn't until modern times, in my opinion, that a majority of the artists get more and more recognition for what their work is while they're alive. And all the rules have changed a lot too, especially with the creation of things like YouTube and various social media platforms. Now that people can just download music or stream it online for just a small subscription fee every single month, you don't quite see as many albums being sold. You don't see as many albums being released anymore either. On the other hand, because of things like YouTube and other social media platforms, a lot of us artists have a means of self-publishing our material and sharing it with the world without having to go through some company or sign a contract. It's just amazing how much the rules have changed over the years about intellectual property, how it's defined, and how you get published, and how you share your art with the world, and how do you charge for your artwork. How do you put a value on art? How can you possibly put a financial number on artwork? Well, I suppose you can take a look at how many hours it took for you to create something, and then figure out what your overall expenses are for a year, figure out how much that is valued down to the hour, and then times it by how many hours you put into the work, and then maybe jack it up a little bit because you're probably not getting paid for many of the hours that you're alive anyway. That's just a suggestion. I don't even know. I have no idea how to value my art, and it's something I've struggled with over the years as an artist. How much do I charge to do a gig? How much do I charge for an event that I'm doing or a service that I'm providing? And I'll admit, I have pirated some media in the past. Don't tell anyone. But to be fair, I think many of us have, in one way or the other, even sometimes unknowingly doing so. But getting to the overall point of this video, I want to move forward now and discuss various pieces of art that I have collected over the years for absolutely free. Now you might ask, did I pirate these pieces of art? I don't feel like I pirated any of these images that I'm about to show you here. I did collect some of them off the internet, and some of them involved me doctoring up a little bit to make them the way I wanted to. But without further ado, I'd like to present to you 
free art that I've collected over the years. Now this artwork isn't necessarily free. You're going to have to go to a dollar store and buy some frames that fit a standard computer sized piece of paper. I think it's eight and a half by 11 inches or so. Well if you get a frame that's slightly bigger than that or even right on that point or even slightly smaller you can always crop the edges. Anyways I took a popular meme that was circulating the internet for a long time and I went to a meme generation website and I typed in my own header and footer. Now at risk of giving you too much information, personally when I'm at my house I like to sit down when I'm using the toilet. When I'm in public places it's a little different, but when I'm at home I'm comfortable enough I can sit down. And I do my best thinking when I'm in the restroom, so sometimes I like to take my time, maybe do some email, write in my notebook. I'm weird. Anyways, too much information there. But the point is, is I put this little number up inside my restroom because whenever I have male house guests over in the past and there's pee on the seat, I know I didn't do it, but for some reason they don't clean up after themselves. What's up with that, right? So I put this piece of art up on my wall because sometimes art is practical and it can be funny too. So hey, kill two birds with one stone, I say. And in speaking of utilizing memes from the internet in a fun and exciting way in your restroom, I put this one in front of my toilet so when you're using the toilet and you're sitting down and there's a little table in front of you, you have the Reddit troll face staring at you, just kind of peering around the corner that is in a very unassuming place that you can only see if you're sitting down using the toilet. I've had a couple guests laugh about it. Some other ones were a little freaked out wondering what it was and I had to explain it. If you don't know what the Reddit troll is, it's that funny looking face right there. And it was a face that's been circulating on reddit.com for a long time. People will use that face to signify that someone's trolling or that they are trolling someone else. I always thought the face looked a little creepy and weird and like kind of like Quagmire from Family Guy or something like that. I just thought it was funny to throw it in there. I, I, I giggled about it for a bit too long one night when I put it in there and I went to bed later that night and giggled about it before I went to bed. The next day it was still funny so I left it in the location I put it. And it's been there for probably over a couple years now. I don't apologize for it. So if you take memes from online and you make them into your own and you put them inside of a frame and put them in your house, you can make them in a fun way or sometimes a fun and even functional way. Food for thought. Maybe you could use this in your home. So sometimes when I'm surfing online I find some interesting images and I save them in a file. I think a lot of us do this. And there's a couple of artists that I've really, really appreciated a lot over the years. Musical artists. Those two artists are David Bowie and Prince. And I found this image online and I thought it was just too cool not to print up and put inside my house. They look so saintly and holy and just... Oh. Now I know Prince and David Bowie isn't for everyone out there. And I'm not saying you should print them up and put them inside your house. But I appreciate them very much as an artist. And I appreciate and admire a lot of the material they produced over the years. So I printed them up and put them inside my house. I appreciate those two artists very much, in fact, and I also appreciate Freddie Mercury a lot from Queen, as well as the artist Elton John. So I took all four of these folks, Freddie Mercury, Prince, David Bowie, and Elton John, and I put them through an online pop art Andy Warhol style art generator. And the result was this image right here. I took the four images of the four artists that I mentioned, and I put them to the generator, and then I printed up a page of each one of them. Each page had four smaller pictures of them on each one and then put it in this big poster sized frame that I got for like eight bucks. And bam we have pop art of pop artists. Pretty clever isn't it? I always liked the pop art style of Andy Warhol. I know it faced a lot of criticism from people that it's just manufactured garbage but I think that's part of what Andy was trying to communicate. And I think that's part of what I'm trying to communicate here is that Art can just be manufactured nowadays in your own home on your own computer and your computer printer. So far I don't think I ripped off any particular artists or have done any sort of harm to any of these artists. I'm not selling this stuff, it's just on display in my own home because I appreciate these artists. And I respect them very much too. Some of the art that I've printed up too isn't necessarily something that I've created myself or adapted from internet images. In this case this is a piece by Jules Adolph Brenton. It's called The Song of the Lark and it was made in 1884. At first glance, if I saw this piece in an art museum, I may just walk right past it because it doesn't really resonate with me at first glance. But the reason this has grown on me over the years is because I saw this interview with a fellow, you might have heard of him, his name's Bill Murray. He's one of my favorite actors and comedians of all time. 
Anyways, Bill Murray in this interview told a story about how art saved his life once. So Bill Murray, he walked out of an audition where he completely bombed. This was before he got his career started. And he felt so horrible about how he did in the audition for this acting role that he was auditioning for, that when he left, he felt so much in despair that he just didn't care to live anymore. So as he walked out from where he was auditioning, he walked and kept walking towards the water and he thought he was walking in the correct direction, but it turns out he was walking in the complete wrong direction for a while. So once he figured that out, he turned around and started walking in the correct direction. And because of this error, he walked past an art museum in Chicago. And he thought, well, I'm probably not gonna live long anyways, I might as well go take in some, some art and culture. And he walked inside of this art museum and he encountered this painting right here. And for some reason or another, he said, when he stared at this painting, he saw this image of this lady. It might have been in the morning, it might have been in the afternoon. Either way, the sun was either rising or setting. And this barefoot woman, she's holding a scythe in her hand, it looks like she's either done a whole entire day of work or she's about to start a whole long day of work. And what Bill Murray got out of this particular painting was, every day's a new day and every day is another opportunity to start and do it again and do it better than we did yesterday. Every day is another opportunity. So after I saw that interview, I decided to look up the painting online. And when I did, I saw the image. I thought it was worth keeping around because of the story that Bill Murray attached to it. And upon looking at the painting, it's a beautiful piece of art. So now I have this inside my home. And on those days when I'm feeling down and blue and depressed, it's good to look at that and remember the story that Bill told about it. And it makes me feel a lot better knowing that every day is a new day and every day is another opportunity to do it a little bit better than yesterday. Up next on the various pieces of art that I've printed up and put on display in my household is this one. This one's called Nymphs and Seder. It was made in 1873 by a Frenchman named William Adolf Bouguereau. I know both of these artists had middle names of Adolf. No relation. Middle names. I'm not particularly fond of that name, but hey, that's what their names are. Anyways, I really like this piece a lot because it features this satyr inside of the woods, this mythological creature with goat legs and it has these nymphs or woodland fairy-like creatures that are tempting the satyr to come into the water and play with them and also waving to a couple in the background to come on over and help us play with this 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 satyr creature the satyr looks absolutely terrified because i don't know if you know this but satyrs are afraid of water and apparently they're also afraid of commitment as well and maybe even polyamorous relationships and for whatever reason as a young man in my early 20s when i first saw this painting i felt like the satyr represented my dynamic fear and desire for beautiful women but more importantly than what the satyr represented to me at the time as a young man if you really take a look at the actual painting or a picture of it on the internet you can really appreciate how well this artist managed to bring to life the human form and the shading and the color blending and everything is just absolutely amazing. I mean, this is before computers, this is before cameras. You have to think about this back in the 1800s. All they had was their eyes, a paint palette, and a canvas, and they had to make it work somehow. And this artist really brought those human forms to life. Now, me being someone who can appreciate and respect the art of science, when I saw this little number on the internet, I just had to download it and print it up and frame it and put it in my house. I'll blow it up for you so you can see the whole thing. This piece, which was obviously inspired by The Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci, from left to right we have Galileo Marie Curie, J. Robert Oppenheimer, Isaac Newton, Louis Pasteur, Stephen Hawking, Albert Einstein, standing up with big arms, Carl Sagan, Thomas Edison, Aristotle, Neil deGrasse Tyson, who I feel is kind of strange that they put him in there, but hey, I'm not complaining, I like the guy. Richard Dawkins and Charles Darwin. I just thought it was a little chuckle worthy and I print it up and I have it in my house on my wall in my kitchen. But I can't find who created this piece and I'd like to give them credit because it is quite funny, but at any rate, there we have it. Now I have one more piece of art that I'd like to print up that I think is the most valuable piece of art out of all the pieces I have in my house. But before we get to that point, I'd like to share with you something that I created and I put on the wall at a rejected art show. It's got a fun little story. It's this piece right here and it says, art is subjective, but the subjective part is crossed out and it's put rejective in there with red ink. 
and it's a pretty plain piece of art, but for it to make sense, I have to tell you about the nature of this particular art show. So during this art show, I put this piece on the wall without any permission at all because the art show was called The Rejected Art Show. And one of the requirements for you to be able to put your piece of art into this particular art show was that your art had to be rejected from some other art show. So you had to present a formal email or some sort of evidence that you tried to submit this piece of art somewhere else and it was rejected. And that was the only requirement for you to be considered to be entered into this art exhibit. Now me being a fan of an artist that you may or may not have heard before but you should look up most definitely is an artist called Banksy. Banksy is a true artist in the greatest forms possible. Some people call Banksy a graffiti artist but I don't think that they're necessarily limited to graffiti by any stretch of the imagination. Banksy is this amazing human being that requires a whole different video of their own at a later date. But for the purposes of this video, something that Banksy liked to do was take his artwork that he created and he would put them on the walls of famous museums without being noticed. And then eventually someone would notice and they'd have to pull it off the wall. So I tried to do something similar to that and I called myself Flexi and on the back of this it says a Flexi original. I'm not sure if it flips that or not with this camera. but. And then I also put a little bit of information about the art on the wall. I like to read it to you right here. Title, Art is Rejective. Artist, Flexi. It's cheesy, I know. About it. Making a world-class debut at a rejected art show in Detroit Friday, April 1st, 2016, this controversial artist broke new bounds and became an instant smash hit with world collectors. Price, not for sale, priceless. And it was just a happenstance chance, perhaps, that it was also on April Fool's Day. But the story is no April Fool's joke. This is something that actually happened, and I was pretty proud of it. So I put it on the wall, no one said anything, it sat there for the whole entire art show, and I stood next to it pretending to be Flexi's representative, explaining the importance of this particular piece of work to people. And it was amazing to see people's different reactions. A couple of folks actually were buying into what I was saying, even though I was just telling a tall tale for the sake of fun hoping that they would understand who Banksy is and what I was talking about. But some people just went right over their heads and they just kind of like looked at me like I was a lunatic or something and walked away. But at any rate, I had a lot of fun with that one. Thanks for listening to the story about that. But finally, the moment we've been waiting for, the one piece of art that I value more than anything else that I've printed up off my printer that's currently in my household. Drum roll, please. Lucy the Cat, ladies and gentlemen, Lucy the Cat. Yeah, this photo right here was taken by a good buddy of mine, B.P. Legault, or his name's Brian. B.P. Legault, or Brian, is an amazing artist himself, a painter, a photographer, and an artistic visionary. This fellow is a very progressive thinker and has a wonderful imagination, and it's a great person just to sit back and talk to every once in a while. Every time I talk to him, I feel a little more inspired and a little more motivated to create more art myself. And with that, Lucy the Cat, I'd like to say thanks very much, everyone, for watching. Oh yeah, and if you're new to my channel, please know that every week I post another circus and flow arts tutorial. So, if you'd like to learn how to juggle, or contact juggle, with those crystal balls, look at that, it's pretty cool, huh? Or spin things on your finger, like trays or books, or even do the devil sticks, then please check out my playlist section here on my channel, because I post a new circus and flow arts tutorial every single week, and it starts with the beginner level stuff, so check it out. Alright everyone, this has been a long video today, but it was worth it. Art is everything. Thanks very much for watching this all the way to the end, and remember, keep safe, be well, stay humble, and peace.